This lecture covers ontogeny, which is shape change during growth from the juvenile to the adult form, as well as heterochrony, which is an evolutionary process related to changes in the rate, timing, or duration of ontogenetic shape change. Morphological change during ontogeny, such as shown in the trilobite pictures on this slide, uh, is extremely common. Uh, so first I'll introduce some terminology describing the trajectory of morphological change during ontogeny, and then describe how shifts in that ontogenetic change can lead to different types of, of heterochrony. So in some cases of growth, different parts of the organism can grow at the same rate, and therefore the ratio between two measurements is constant or remains unchanged during life. That's called isometric growth, and it appears as a linear trend such as this, on a plot, a bivariate plot like the one here showing length versus width of a trilobite cephalon. However, you can see that growth in this species shown by the, the dots, um, at least measured by the length to width ratio, does not fall along that linear trend. Uh, in fact, at larger sizes, uh, the width increases more slowly than the length, resulting in, in shape change. So the head becomes longer relative to the width as it becomes an adult. Um, so nonlinear plots like this, which is maybe a better description of the data, are examples of something called anisometric growth, where shape changes during ontogeny. There's a special case of anisometric growth, where measured features when you plot one versus the other are related by some sort of power law relationship. Uh, when you plot that, so the upper graphs show that, the lower graphs show it plotted with uh, uh, logarithmic scales, in this case, it's linear in, in logarithmic space with a slope of, of a, where a is the exponent. Um, exponents or values of a greater than 1 indicate something called positive allometry, where the y-axis variable grows increasingly quickly relative to the x-axis variable, for example, in a and b. Um, and in c and d, you can see exponents less than 1, where, which is the opposite, or negative allometry, where the y-axis variable increases more slowly as the x-axis variable increases. So allometric growth is actually quite common, and to illustrate why, let's consider this extinct echinoderm here called a rhombiferin. So like many echinoderms, uh, rhombiferins have a more or less spherical body. It's flattened here, but you can see this circular uh, body composed of, of plates of calcium carbonate attached to a stem. Uh, some of these plates, the two illustrated with the yellow arrows, um, have slits for respiration or gas exchange, the uptake of oxygen and, and the, the excretion of CO2. Um, but when measured, the size of these respiratory plates increases more rapidly than the overall size of the body. That's an example of allometric growth, and the reason for that allometric growth is because of surface area to volume problems or constraints. Uh, oxygen uptake is going to be limited by the surface area of the slits in the respiratory plates, whereas the metabolic oxygen demand is going to be a function or scale with the body volume. In fact, this relationship increases more quickly than the predicted allometry. The graph in the, the bottom right shows a, a slope of 1, which you would expect if the area increased as fast as the volume increased. But the actual data are, are have a greater slope than that, uh, perhaps because oxygen uptake is, is not perfect as it passes over these slits. So allometric growth or anisometric growth are extremely common um, because per, in large part of these surface area to volume effects and, and other reasons. So as a result, changes in the rate or the timing or the duration of that allometric shape change can result in different adult morphologies, and that can potentially lead to speciation. Speciation is just the evolution of a new species from an ancestral species. So these shifts in rate, duration, or timing of growth are grouped as something called heterochrony. Heterochrony just means different time, um, and it can take multiple forms. Uh, but there are two main categories. It can lead to something called pedomorphosis, where the adult form of the descendant species resembles one of the juvenile forms of the ancestral species. Uh, the opposite of that is called paramorphosis, 
And in this case, the descendant species has developed beyond the ancestral adult. And as a result, the juvenile stages of the descendant resemble the adults of the ancestor. So as the graph here illustrates, there are three different ways in which you can achieve pedamorphosis or paramorphosis, which we're going to walk through over the next couple of slides. But to illustrate the outcomes of heterochrony, let's consider this hypothetical organism that undergoes allometric growth. For example, the central dot size grows more quickly, quickly than the overall body. And this organism also has features that appear at different ontogenic stages. So stages A through D are defined by morphology. Uh, for example, the top two spines always appear in what is called stage B, and the bottom spines in stage C, so forth. Uh, the width of the boxes, A, B, C, and D, are scaled to time. So there are three ways in which growth can change with heterochrony. First, we can change the duration of ontogeny by shifting the time of maturity, changing the onset of when sexual maturation occurs and when growth slows down or stops. Um, if maturity is reached early, this is called progenesis in the, the upper blue box, uh, the mature form of the descendant is in stage C because it's reached sexual maturity more quickly. The ancestral form is shown at the top. And you can see that the, the descendant resembles one of the juvenile stages of the ancestor. Therefore, this is pedamorphosis. It's a specific type of pedamorphosis called progenesis. If sexual maturity is delayed, this is called hypermorphosis, and the adult of the descendant has gone beyond the ancestor. The adult is stage E, which is not observed at all in the ancestor at the top. Therefore, this is an example of paramorphosis, caused by delayed sexual maturation. Second, we can change the rate of morphological development. And it's important to note that this is not the rate of physical size increase. It's simply the rate at which shape is changing as the organism grows in size. So if the rate of morphological development is reduced, the organism spends longer time in stages A, B, and C. Notice that the A box in the descendant in the blue rectangle is wider, longer time than the A box in the ancestor. So this is an example of paramorphosis because you can see that the adult, the final form in the blue rectangle, is in stage C and it resembles the juvenile of the ancestor. So this is a form of pedamorphosis called neoteny. In contrast, if the rate is faster, the organism proceeds through the growth stages more quickly. So A is shorter, B is shorter, C is shorter and therefore the juvenile resembles the ancestral adult. So the ancestral adult is in stage D, but stage D is a juvenile form of the descendant. So in, in the red box there, this is paramorphosis called acceleration. Finally, development can be changed not by changing the rate or the duration, but simply by changing the timing at which specific morphological structures appear. So remember that in the ancestor at the top there, the letters are stages defined by morphology and the horizontal distance is time. Uh, in the blue box, stage A, which is defined by the first appearance of the central dot, occurs later in time after the birth of the organism. There's an earlier stage, the juvenile, uh, the very first stage is even more um, juvenile than the ancestral form. So this is an example of something called post-displacement, and it results again in the adult resembling the juvenile of the ancestor, the adult in the blue box is in stage C, and this is an example of pedamorphosis. In the red box, structures begin to develop even earlier in the lifespan, so it starts at stage B already possessing the top spines. Um, this is called pre-displacement, and it's a type of paramorphosis. So in most organisms, growth slows or even stops when the individual reaches sexual maturity or adulthood. Um, as a result, the adult size can vary predictably under different types of heterochrony. So in progenesis, in the upper left, uh, sexual maturity is reached earlier, 
So that means that the adult ends up smaller than the ancestor. It spends less time in the growing juvenile stage and reaches maturity and stops growing more quickly. In hypermorphosis, however, the organism spends longer in this growing juvenile stage, so the final adult version is larger than the ancestor. In pre- and post-displacement, the rate and the duration are both unchanged, um, so the adult size is also unchanged. You can see those are in the middle rows, the patamorphosis in the left column, the paramorphosis in the right column. Uh, neoteny slows the rate of morphological development, remember not the rate of physical growth through time, so this means that the organism spends a longer time in the growing juvenile stage and becomes larger. You can see in the second from the bottom on the left, the, the final adult is bigger than the ancestral adult at the bottom. Acceleration is the opposite, and the descendant adult ends up smaller because there is less time spent in those growing juvenile stages.